For those of you who are familiar with Boise State football or college football in general, you might remember a game in 2010 between the Boise State Broncos and the Nevada Wolfpack. Now, that game ended in heartbreaking fashion for the Broncos as they missed two field goals, one at the end of regulation and one in overtime. And Colin Kaepernick and the Nevada Wolfpack ended Boise State's perfect season. Now, while that loss was a team effort, it seems like the blame only went on one person's shoulders, and that was the kicker, as it oftentimes does, Kyle Brotsman. Kyle is much more than just a kicker, and most certainly more than a kicker who should be known for the game at Nevada. Today, we're going to get to know Kyle Brotsman, as I'm going to let him explain his journey through the sports world. This is the Game Time Guru. So, what time is it? Game Time Guru! What's going on, everybody? Welcome out to another episode of the Game Time Guru Podcast. As you know, I'm Shane Larson, your host, with a very special guest today in the studio here at uh, Unbound. It smells terrible in here, um, but we're here in Meridian, <laughs> Idaho. I don't know what was going on before we got in here, but we're in the studio recording. I got Mr. Kyle Brotsman on the show. Kyle, thanks for joining me. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is uh, it's been something that's been on my mind for quite a while, and finally I reached out to you last week. And I was really excited. I was smiling when you actually texted me back. It was pretty quick that you texted me back. And you're like, yeah, for sure. My wife was wondering why I was so happy. I'm like, you don't understand. Like, (laughs) Kyle just makes me smile every time I hear him. Whether it's a text or it's his voice, it just makes me smile. (laughs) It sounds weird. I know. You make me smile, too. (laughs) Every time I see you, it's like, yes, he's so happy. Dude, it's just, it's one of those things. Probably um, the only person. My girlfriend doesn't even do that for me. (laughs) Well, I'm glad I can feel that void. (laughs) Thank you. Oh, man. So we've got a good discussion coming up. Um for for those who don't know who you are, before we get into the deep discussion of, of Kyle Brotsman, if you could just explain yourself in like two or three sentences, who would you say Kyle Brotsman is? I'm just a normal old man now. Old man. <laughs> Over the hill? Yeah. I, I mean, I just, there's not a whole lot about me. I'm just normal. Love just being normal. I'm nothing special about me. Um, just a local kid that grew up here and is loves being here and is gonna probably never leave never leave <laughs> born and raised once you're here you can't leave oh dude i think we differ in opinion there i need to get <laughs> out <laughs> but i'm still here too so we're in the same boat all right so you you mentioned that you've been working hard like that's what the first thing you said to me today was it's working my life way as a joke obviously but working my life way so you're a normal guy work during the day come home take care of you know you and your your family girlfriend and everyone do you guys have animals yeah, got two crazy dogs. What kind of dogs do you have? I thought they were pretty cool dogs. What was this? I have a pit bull. His name's Sumo. Okay. And then I have a hound pointer pit mix. Her name is Sunny. Okay. And they are freaking crazy. Do you take them to the dog park? Are they allowed to go to the dog park? Uh, no. No. Nah. S- Sunny could. Uh, Sumo's, he's a little aggressive. Is he? Okay. But, I mean, they get along, but just not with everyone else. I don't trust them. Okay. I feel you. But, I mean... He loves playing fetch. I take him to Fuller Park by himself. Yeah, and just throw the ball around in the baseball field. So he loves that. He has a good time. He's weird, but so you like you like dogs. You guys oh, yeah. like your whole family. I've known I've known Kyle just so for everybody knows. So so everybody knows. I've known Kyle for quite a while. Actually, I, I met him when I was in seventh grade because his younger brother is one of my best friends, and Kyle was a year older than us. But he would come in because he was playing basketball at our middle school, and I just always saw him there. So that's when I met Kyle. But I didn't really start talking to you until like. <laughs> like high school or so but i always remember going to your house and you guys had like the coolest dog growing up and that was bear um yeah the coolest dog in the world and i just remember like yeah you guys are you're an animal person so we I are suggest, like, so <laughs> all of us i mean my brian has his dog he's got tucks mike's got two dogs and my mom just gets to watch them but. yeah <laughs> and she gets she has her grand dogs that's what yeah. we call them the grand yeah. dogs yeah i like it dude animal <laughs> person so it's a little bit about Kyle Brotsman on the, the front end, but we're going to talk a little bit about, more about him and, and get to know him. So most of the listeners know you as a kicker for Boise State University, but we're going to talk about before, during, and after that experience um, while you were at Boise State. We're going to talk about the early stages. Something that a lot of people don't know is that uh, you 
played quite a few sports growing up. Let's talk about some of the sports that you competed in, and you were actually really good at the majority of those. So what were some of the sports you played in? Yeah, I mean, I played basketball, soccer, baseball growing up, um, baseball all-stars pretty much every year with on the traveling team, everything, one state with those guys. I mean, soccer, one state a couple times, played that almost year-round. Basketball, Meridian probably didn't have the greatest – teams back in the day growing up like AAU style but (laughs) um yeah I mean I played that and I mean always love playing sports and just try to be better than everybody else so what would you say was your your best like sport that you competed in where were you the best at soccer was my thing um that was probably I mean I love playing soccer I don't I don't know it's just weird I guess because I mean, at that time growing up, soccer wasn't huge in this town. And, um, yeah, it was more baseball, basketball kind of thing. And But I just – I love playing soccer. And, I mean, way more fit than I am now today. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it helped me with everything else. I mean, with speed and agility and what, put that into any other sport that I played. And so – yeah, man. And when did you stop playing soccer, though? You you grew up playing it. Yeah. I, your family played it. You guys were all, like, crazy soccer right? players. When did you quit playing soccer? So I stopped, what was it, uh, going into my senior year of high school. Uh, okay. I stopped then just because football, I saw more of something going on in football when I started that in high school. Um going into my junior year, I guess, starting football is like, uh, I don't really want to play soccer anymore. Plus, I mean, at that time, again, Meridian lost everybody to yeah. Mountain View. I mean, I won state as a sophomore and at Meridian for soccer, and then Mountain View was built, and everyone went over there, and junior year, I think we won maybe three games. Yeah, it was the soccer it was, program at Meridian was pretty bad, <laughs> I mean, to I, say I, the least. I loved it. I mean, every kid tried, but, I mean, it was just tough to – I mean, I'm I'm a competitor, and I love winning, and I hate to freaking lose. And, and it's – you're losing almost every single game. Right. E. Yeah. Yeah, so. so, yeah, you quit because it got hard. No, I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> so you mentioned, though – when you when you were introduced to football, it's kind of like when you started making the shift over to football. But what people don't know is that you didn't start football till later, and so you started your junior year, right? Right. Uh, I guess you could say eighth grade year. I played one season. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think I broke a kid's finger when I kicked the football, but I played receiver for the middle school one year, and then that was it. And then I didn't pick it back up until junior year, um, and that was that time. I was just I was just kicking. Uh, and a couple buddies, Jeff and Lester, you know, those guys, yeah. and they were like, just come try out for us. And I'm like, all right, cool. Why not? I got nothing else to do. And so I'd bounce back and forth between both practices. And then finally that senior year, I just decided to go football full time. Cause they wanted me to play receiver just to throw go routes too. Yeah. Um, and then I ended up playing safety and DB and all over the place and, just love playing football. I mean, I didn't grow up playing football, didn't know a whole lot about it, and then just kind of got thrown into it and, I mean, kind of enjoyed it. Yeah. Better, better than losing all the time with soccer and just kind of got fell out of the passion for that, for soccer. And uh, Totally. Totally. And you guys had a pretty solid football squad. When you when you came on there, like, they were good. Like, yeah, we were, were good. good. Yeah, I mean, Verdon was good. I mean, glad he's back. Yeah, there, man, it's going to be now. crazy. It's, it's going to be – they're gonna they're gonna be in for one, but they're gonna be they know that Vernon's gonna change that program around, and so I've got lucky enough that I think I'm gonna be able to help out with the Are freshman you? team. Yeah, so uh. I talked to him. He wants me to help out the freshman team, and so yeah, so that'll be fun. Kind of just work with their guys, with their kickers, and then whatever they need, and then just mentor some young kids' minds. <laughs> I like it, man. Yeah, that we were talking about Vernon coming back to the local town, and those kids are either going to. They're gonna hate them or they're, love them. They're gonna they're either gonna quit because they haven't seen any of that. They haven't seen that type of a, like that style of a coach for the last decade. Like they really haven't. Like, no. And so now it's gonna be a whole new world for what most of those kids in the valley because nobody really understands it nowadays. Like what you guys had to go through back then, uh, it's it's crazy. Yeah, I mean those were dog days, and I mean it was, I mean looking back, you know it's worth it now. Yeah. To know that you kind of you were able to go through that with a group of guys. I mean just at the high school level. I mean. It gets better as you go on to college, but high school level, I mean, you still talk. I still talk to some of those guys daily. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, it was just fun. But they're in for they're in for one once they figure <laughs> out what they're getting themselves into. And I mean, I hope those guys. I mean, Meridian's always been that blue collar yeah school around everyone else around in this town. And I mean, they fight uh, every game that they're in. So I mean, he's got a lot of good guys to work with there and. It'll be fun for them. It'll be sweet. I'm excited to see it. I Same didn't know here. you were going to be over there helping, so that's going to be even better. Yeah, kind of a last-minute thing. Kind of just stopped by his office and talked to him for a minute and asked what I was doing. And I said, why not? I'll help you out if I can. So Sweet deal. That's going to be rad. Um, so, yeah, you mentioned as well, though, like when you were when you were playing football, you were – a receiver, a safety, and a kicker. Like, you were everything. Um, I remember one memory specifically. I was watching you in the stands. You caught a touchdown. You took it to the house. And I don't know how many touchdowns you had your senior year. You may have only had a few. But, like, yeah. you took it to the house, and then you had to kick a field goal afterwards. I think <laughs> I you missed the field goal. Uh, yeah. or the, oh, sorry, <laughs> I, the extra I, point. I missed a couple. Of I was not very good in high school kicking. I, you know, That's not true. I was our, I wasn't the. I wasn't as consistent as I was at, going on in my years after but yeah i would miss a couple pats after running 60 yards and you were like yeah that's <laughs> not, my point was like not to necessarily emphasize no, the miss no. extra point but was to like <laughs> emphasize you were like you burned everybody everyone's stoked about the touchdown because you were faster than everyone back then and then you had to go kick an extra point you don't usually see kickers that are actually really fast and get to play skill position so that was pretty sick yeah it was fun i enjoyed every minute of it and i got to Got to somewhat shine, I guess. Yeah. And before going under the rock as a kicker, <laughs> getting that name. Dude, but. so so let's talk about your kicking, though. So um, you went to Boise State University, and, and we'll talk about that in, in more detail here. But we want to talk about how you got to Boise State because originally you weren't going to go to Boise State. So can you talk about what you were going to do, what the plan was originally? Yeah, so I was supposed to go up to Montana State Northern uh, up in Haver, Montana, it's the only school that showed any sort of interest in me. Um, I actually got the phone call on a voicemail after when I was playing a game over at Centennial for basketball. I would listen to my voicemail up there, like, hey, we want to talk with you. And I'm like, oh, what the heck? Like, this is weird. So uh, I sat down, talked with them, met them up in Haver, Montana, originally signed with them. Um, and that head coach – his father-in-law um, is Petrino, who used to be the old Carroll College head coach okay. back in the day. when And my dad was actually recruited by Carroll College with their head coach. Uh, and okay, okay. There's my dad sure. ended up turning him down. And then, <laughs> so, and then we find out that the Sampson family is – he married into the Petrino family. And then um, – I ended up turning him down <laughs> two days or so before I was supposed to report up there because I got an opportunity to walk on at Boise State after annoying the heck out of them down there, constantly going down there and asking what I can do. And I mean, and that, at that time it was Coach Hawk and Coach Ridd were there, which Coach Ridd is now back. Um, but they're like, oh, we don't have any red shirt sp- spots for you. You can gray shirt. And I was like, I don't even know what that is. And they're like, well, you kind of be a part of the team but you're not (laughs) I'm like all right cool why not so but kind of going back to you know turning uh Montana State Northern down I mean they that coach screamed and yelled at me we were talking about this (laughs) earlier um he screamed and yelled at me told me you know few expletives and you know I was like yeah I mean it's a d1 school I mean nothing against the NAIA level but I mean you know, I think I can I can compete at that level. And so he hung up the phone, told me I was making a mistake, um, called up my dad right after that, told my dad <laughs> that I was making a mistake and that, you know, he's not going to do anything. And then my dad said, well, he's going to a D1 school. And, I mean, he's – and it's here. And so kind of that's – the rest is history with that. I mean, I, the career speaks for itself. So he was right. wrong. So he was wrong. Um, but he is no longer at Montana State Northern. Um, but yeah, so so it's a check shirt. mark though. You get to you yeah. get to put your finger up there. And, I yeah, was right. I get to I get, I get to have a little bit of a ego on that one because I I mean I've proved everyone wrong basically my whole life of any type of sports of of anything. So you know, just one more thing adding to the list. And yeah. 
So walking on at Boise State, gray-shirted, take one credit to get in, basically. So you're a part-time student. That's all you have to be is a part-time student. You don't have to hit a certain amount of credits. And I took weightlifting, you know, just because, I mean, I wasn't the biggest kid or anything, and I wanted to, you know, I didn't really work out in high school a whole lot because it wasn't a huge fad as it is now. And right. that's important. No one really knew a whole lot. And um, so those times have changed. But I got into a weightlifting class, and, you know, there's only a couple of us that were actually gray shirts were in it too, but it was with basically everybody in uh, at Boise State. I mean, it wasn't just football-related, kind of what they do now. They break it apart, gray shirts and all that stuff. So times right. have changed that whole way. So, yeah, I did that. The Coach Hawk ended up leaving. Coach Ridd left. I was like, oh, crap, now what? Like, are they still going to remember me? But come that spring season of 06, they had a meeting. And um, I remember Kyle Pike was actually gray shirting too with me. Um, But there's only two gray shirts that stayed in my class, me and Ryan Winterswike. Oh, really? I didn't know Winterswike was a gray shirt. I didn't didn't Yeah, because he ended up – he messed up his leg and so fresno state didn't they took his scholar the offer away and so he ended up coming to boise state lucky us yeah um but yeah so me and him are the only ones that survived those five years from gray shirting to our senior year so that's pretty cool um but yeah i mean with the coaches leaving probably the best thing that ever happened because coach pete didn't know who i was coach choate who was coming in had no idea who i was um and I mean, no one knew really. I mean, I didn't even know what I could do at that time. And I just kept competing and, you know, learned from Kyle Stringer and Anthony Montgomery at that time. And, um, so those guys were huge in my success too. And with Tyler Jones being a, an old kicker from that, from the days too, uh, from actually the real startup days. That, right. I mean, once Boise state kind of got on the map, Tyler was kicking for him. And, um, so yeah, I mean, I had a lot of guys help me out to get to where, that but yeah oh my goodness like getting there was I mean a year and a half of not playing a sport or being in any type of competition or a game setting I mean that was tough for me just because I'd always been in that type of setting and so yeah that's that's kind of how that's kind of my story of how I got from the gray shirt to a red shirt and you know I red shirt year is I mean my little brother is able to red shirt too got him over there with us and then I mean we both got to experience uh fiesta bowl against ou and you know got to see what that was kind of about and i mean i remember the the one thing coach choate said to me that during those warm-ups he's like kick all you can because you're going to be back here so okay. just soak it up and i mean just i mean you're in this you're in this stadium i mean the university of phoenix stadium is huge yeah i, I mean it's crazy um and it was but yeah so i mean those words stuck with me and i mean yeah, I mean, he's a huge mentor in my life of getting to that career I had. And that was my redshirt season Dude. leading up to it. I mean, it was. You had quite a story getting to Boise State and then getting in there. And, like, obviously you had the Fiesta Bowl. You got to experience. I mean, even just being, like, traveling with the team and being able to experience it, even from the sideline went right. against OU, which was probably – I mean, that's the game that kind of, like, turned the tide for the the Boise State program as a whole. I mean, obviously we were on the upswing before that as a program, but, like, that Oklahoma game obviously was, you know, Statue of Liberty, the the nation got behind us. It put us on the map even more than what we were. And um, so that was – I mean, it was was pretty exciting. I was actually supposed to burn my redshirt year against Oregon State. Weren't you, like, a specialty kicker? Explain that. Uh, Yeah, so – all week long, they were working on, like, sky kicks because, I mean, they had the Rogers brothers. That's right. And those dudes are freaks. I mean, they're – I almost broke my arm trying to tackle one of the dudes because his leg was the size of my whole body. Uh, <laughs> and uh, – but, yeah, they – so, like, Stringer wasn't able to sky kick and Monty couldn't sky kick. I mean, it was just one of those days. And then there were the like, – Choate's like, get him – like, get him in there. And luckily for Monty, he helped out and was like, you really want to burn his red shirt year for just a couple sky kicks. And he's like, okay, good thinking. So <laughs> I, I at least got four more years after that. Um, but yeah, so that was kind of, I was like, Oh, I'm going in <laughs> <laughs> kind of freaking out a little yeah. bit, but um, yeah. So I almost ended up burning that, but luckily I didn't just yeah. for a few kickoffs. Oh, Cause for I sure. mean, kickoffs were not my strong suit. 
Well, okay, we'll get to that <laughs> in a second too. But yeah. no, I got you. Um, so you get to you know go through the gray shirt, red shirt, get get to have the experience to be around that, be in a big stadium as well. You kind of get that experience before having to play, which I think mm-hmm. is a benefit for a lot of people. Sometimes you see, you even see it in like the college basketball level where these one and dones they come in right out of high school. Yeah, they're extremely talented, very athletic. But then they kind of get in those big moments, and some of them freeze up and some of them don't because they don't get to be around that very often beforehand. Um, Same thing with, like, I always compare it to, like, you know, Ben Simmons. Like the Philadelphia 76ers, for instance, they take these guys that came out of college and they call it trusting the process. I think it's a little, I think it's a little sketchy. But for some reason, their first round picks keep getting hurt their first year. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but what that allows them to, in turn, do is be around the game for a while. And they they They're basically learning. get a red shirt season. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it really is. It's, I mean, these guys are 18, 19 years old yeah. coming out of college where they didn't red shirt or anything. They were stars in their first years. Yeah, you get to the NBA. I mean. You probably should sit just at least for half the season yeah. or something. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, they're basically taking red shirt cheers. I mean, look at the season Ben Simmons is having now. Yeah, now he's having an amazing year because of that. Like, I, And I, I think – I'm not going to say it's only because of that, but I believe it has something to do with it because he was around it. He gets well, to be and, part of the and atmosphere. And Embiid, too. Embiid is the same way. Exactly. I mean, I mean, all those guys. And, I mean, Fultz just came back. I mean, he's an, he's an assist king right now. Yeah. I, mean, I think he's he's got – pretty close to 20 assists in like two games, two games almost or something like that i mean he's killing it yeah his assist rebounds i mean his points aren't there but they're coming i mean he's at two games yeah anyways so no no <laughs> a little basketball see, talk can, with uh, kyle Bross. i love i love talking sports i mean <laughs> i love it see but that, that, that's the thing I, and i'm glad that we brought up your gray shirt and red shirt season now you get into your actual career at boise state freshman year this is going to be kind of uh, ironic because one of your, your crazy games that kind of puts you on the map as far as, like, who was Kyle Bratzman was actually – uh, it was like a double overtime game against Nevada. Yeah. Uh, four overtime game. Yeah, at home. It was actually Kaepernick's first game. He yeah, started, it was Kaepernick's yeah. first game. I was at that game. Oh, it was a fun <laughs> game. It was on a Sunday night, actually. Yeah, it was. It was a weird, weird, weird night. We always played – I think I played every single day in my college career – Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, on. I mean, it wasn't a day that because it was all weird. It was all yeah at that time, and we wanted to play anywhere, everywhere, whatever. Yeah, did it. But anyways, back to that game. I I remember you kicking some crazy uh, field goals, especially one of them. I think was to if you missed it, we were out, and it was in OT. I think they had made it on the first one. Yeah, I mean, well, to get into overtime, we had a I had to kick one just to tie it to get to overtime. Yes, and so I remember. Coach All actually called a timeout for Nevada, and I was kind of I smiled because I was like, oh, "What is he doing?" Um, but yeah, they ended up making that go overtime. Same thing, got to make it. Um, and then afterwards, in overtime, I mean, you don't kick extra points or anything like that. You always got to go for two. And luckily, then at that time, and long story short, the defense held up on the goal line. That's right. It's sixty-nine, sixty-seven. Now we're gonna check your statistic. Four for four on field goals. There you go. Forty yarder. As well, so that was like the game. I remember being there. I actually got on ESPN that game um, <laughs> with my uncle. Time, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're good at getting me on TV, uh, man. <laughs> I try, I try. <laughs> so that kind of puts you on the map. But I kind of want you to talk about like we we'll get to the the tough discussion in a minute. But I mean, you had some crazy games. There were some crazy games that you were a part of. What was your favorite game that you were a part of, whether it was a win or a loss? Like, you had some cool games to be a part of. You know, Virginia Tech, we're talking Fiesta yeah. Bowl, all those games. Um, those are – I mean, all those are fun. Um, yeah, it was, I've been lucky to be a part of a lot of yeah awesome games and teams and uh, opportunities. I mean, punting, too. I never thought I was going to punt, so that was crazy. Then, when did that change happen? Um my freshman year is just – I mean, Choate likes to do that rollout yeah. um, punt that – I mean, a lot of schools, teams do that, but I, they just haven't figured out how to do it because I watch a lot of games and it just doesn't doesn't work. But uh, somehow Choate got me to do the right thing, and, yeah, I punted. And, but, I mean, I mean, every time I got out there was fun. Um, I'm trying to think of what games – I mean, early in my years – I mean, we played. I mean, we played TCU. I mean, that game was fun in, in San Diego. I mean, it's heartbreaking. Um, man, playing Oregon at home was fun. 
going to Oregon, playing at Autzen, Autzen Stadium, because, I mean, I I was born in Portland. I grew up in Portland before I even moved here. And so I lived in Eugene, you know, growing up a little bit. And so kind of going back and being able to play in that stadium where I saw a couple games or two um, and winning there. Washington was fun, uh, even though that – I mean – didn't have we didn't win that one I mean Jake Locker was there I was at that Uh, game I think that was your first field goal attempt wasn't it you got blocked it was like a 50 yarder (laughs) yeah Yeah, they put you in for like a 50 yarder I think and the guy that I want to say the guy that blocked it Caesar Rayford I ended up ended up playing with him down in Salt Lake oh okay okay I didn't (laughs) know that we would talk about it back and forth every now and then but (laughs) (laughs) that's tight yeah uh but yeah I mean Virginia Tech was fun I mean I battled injuries during that Virginia Tech game. I mean, my hip was all messed up. My back was all messed up. I'm on the sideline getting, like, contortion just to get everything feeling right. I got hit a couple times Then that. So, I mean, that my body didn't feel good then. Um, <laughs> still doesn't. <laughs> just as a kicker. I mean, I don't know why. But um, I, going to Hawaii was always fun. I mean, when we – that was fun. Yeah. Uh, and then, I mean, I got to tackle Chris Johnson one time. That actually was, got him? Yeah, I ran him out of side, of, uh, out of bounds. If I hit him, so it counts as a tackle. So <laughs> I could have used that one. Um, oh, man, I was a part of so many good ones. But, yeah, like I said, Oregon at home, just, I mean, pun- punting, pinned him inside, like the one-yard line, they turn around, and we take down Blunt down in the end zone for that sack and I mean then the whole crowd just went crazy after that and I mean that helped momentum wise and holding them to like minus yards rushing yeah. for that game which was ridiculous when they had Masoli and Blunt they had a solid squad for they that did. one game until Blunt's gone did you get it <laughs> were you close to the Blunt yeah punch? I was like right behind it all did you did you know what was going on when it happened I didn't I, see him throw it but I was just like I was like, whoa, what the heck just happened? And then he just he just kind of unleashed on everyone. <laughs> like, they would just get out of his way. And they, I mean, big dude, I'm – nope. <laughs> dude, he was a monster, man. <laughs> he he still is. He's, like, yeah, he still is. I mean, and Detroit's got him now, so. Dude, I mean, he's a journeyman. He's, he's been a lot around the league everywhere he goes. How many Super Bowls does he have now? He's – He's good, dude. He I'll is. give him give him credit. He's everywhere he goes. He's successful, but for some reason he can only get one year deals. Um, but yeah, his punch, yeah, that was a that was crazy. I wasn't there. I was in Brazil at the time on my mission, so um, uh, <laughs> I remember watching it the next morning because I couldn't watch the game, so I had to go to the the internet cafe that they had to check the score the next morning. <laughs> and I see these highlights, and you can believe this, okay? Like I just went off. I see him start. You know, I, I can believe it. <laughs> I've known you since <laughs> seventh grade. I can believe it. Yeah. I started yelling. I'm like, are you kidding? What the? I'm, I'm, I'm cursing on my mission. And my companion that was there was like, <laughs> Larson, we are in public, is what he says. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, nobody uh, understood me. I was speaking English at the time. I was like, are you kidding me? Anyways, I'm glad I wasn't at that game. I probably would have been the fan that ended up, like, almost yeah. causing him to jump in there. And yeah, he probably would have killed him if he got a hold yeah, of him. Yeah, that was crazy. Just <laughs> watching all him just kind of stay away, step back. And I'm like, this is – I'll just walk to the other way. Yeah, like, dude, that's crazy. I kind of want to see what's going on more. Dude, now you mentioned the University of Phoenix Stadium. Obviously, there's a there's a play that happened there when you guys were playing TCU. It's the infamous fake punt. Um, yes. When you threw the ball to Efal, let's let's rewind back in time for a second on the fake punt. I was also in Brazil at that time, but I was watching it at two in the morning, and it was on dial up internet that they Thanks. had over there. Thank you. And I was excited <laughs> on all reason because it was right before I came. It was like two weeks before I came home from my mission, and. Uh, that play was unreal. But let's look, go back in time. Like when it's happening, I'm sure it was so fast that like nothing was like you can't right. really think. But so many things could go wrong there, especially when it's you're throwing the ball. Take us through that yeah. play again. Um Yeah. I guess we'll take a couple steps back. Like I mean, I've talked about it before, but right before going into halftime, we were actually gonna run it. And they called timeout because they they were just yelling, watch the fake, their sidelines, watch the fake. And I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> it's like, so then they end up calling timeout, called it off. Thank God. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't have done anything in that situation. Like, 
like it did for later on in the fourth quarter. But so going up to that play, they were like, "Yeah, we're gonna run it." I'm like, "All right, cool." And so I got the I got the signal from Percy that telling me, "Hey, we're doing this." I'm like, "Okay, cool." And I thought I didn't think that guy was actually gonna run just untouched. <laughs> 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 so I I was supposed to actually run out a little bit further. And luckily I didn't because I just got it and threw it. And, I, I mean, I didn't grab laces. I mean, there's pictures where I, yeah, I, don't, I don't even have laces. I just threw the thing. And I'm like, oh, we practiced this so many times. Please be right there. <laughs> I mean, it was kind of a blind throw, honestly. I mean, <laughs> I just, the only thing I saw was people just chasing him because, I mean, I had big old 35 in my face. Like, yep. like I was like, oh, my gosh, I hope th- I hope he caught it. and. <laughs> Just I'm only mad at him. They didn't score a touchdown. I mean, I've had a couple fake punts that get down to inside the red zone, and right. no one ever scores. I'm like, I just won. I'm like four for four. Yeah, dude, your QBR <laughs> needs to go up, man. I know. I like, that play was insane, and it, it. I mean, I'm sure it was crazy while you're you're doing it. You just kind of have to hope that he's there. But it's kind of cool how it all worked out. I've I've even thought about it from like Efos perspective, like wide open and you got to catch it. like that's such an easy catch but you got to catch the ball like that's yeah. scary for yeah. me yeah yeah he still has to make the catch and i mean the one thing we did really well is we actually ran that play against hawaii earlier in the year but we had it, we had it come from the other side so jason robinson was coming through and he actually we threw it to him and we knew that they were going to scout that so we ended up having running efa through that on that right side so I don't think I thought they they thought they were probably going to, you know, Jason, but you know, we you know, the coaching staff there, I mean, they're smart as heck and yeah. always changing something up and I mean, we always have something up our sleeves and yeah, so the rest is history. <laughs> it that worked one. out. Yeah, it worked out. So, I mean, can't complain and end up having it at that pass and then what made him go almost try to go 99 yards to yeah. the, at the end and Nice. Torn labrum, all that stuff. That was fun. Was that you had a torn labrum at the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just went through that surgery a year ago. Oh, it's no fun. I've done it twice now. Have you really? Yeah, same shoulder. Dude, let me tell you something. People always talk about injuries, like shoulder injuries, and I'm like, now that I finally had to go through a shoulder surgery, I, I don't understand how athletes get back and compete at the same level. Like, no. especially like somebody who has to use their shoulder quite frequently. Like Kaepernick hurt his shoulder. Luck. People are like, dude, yeah, see. That's, I was talking about that, too. I'm like, there's no way this guy's coming back, like, full strength. People are like, no, he'll be back in six weeks. I'm like, no, no, there's not even – that's not even a possibility. That's six weeks. That's a six-month six plus. Six months, that's yeah. That's, like, six-month plus. And, I mean, yeah, that 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 surgery sucks. Dude, it's I'm so glad fun. that, like, you can relate. I forgot that you tore your labrum. I, th- I thought you did it later in the AFL. No, so I had a hernia surgery two days after that Fiesta Bowl. So I played half the year with a hernia. Um, and then – so two months after the hernia surgery, I got my shoulder done. Oh my so that was fun. So that's why I was out that spring, that spring ball okay. at that time. Um, but yeah, I didn't. Then I retore all the anchors out of my shoulder um, in the AFL in Milwaukee when we had a game there when I was doing that whole whole thing. shebang. Yeah, yeah, we'll get there. Making those rounds. <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, so. This is the tough discussion. This is what everybody wants to probably hear, though, so we're going to talk right. about this. Used to it. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure you are. <laughs> There's not one thing that I, one day or one interview or anything like that that this doesn't get brought up. So, so I'll let you get okay. into it. <laughs> okay. So this – yeah, it's awkward for me because I, I love Kyle, so it's it's hard for me to, like, bring this up. But okay. I want to – I kind of want to get you – I've never actually – sat down and talked to you about it so this is good this is a good opportunity to do it so we're at nevada it's black friday 2010 day after thanksgiving um it's coming down to it, it the the season's going really well the team is crushing it we're arguably the best team in the country or one of i mean obviously we're in the top four um and you guys potentially could have played in the national championship but at least the rose bowl was on the line like that's what we had there's two games left in the season okay so national championship never not at that time. You don't think I'd, you would have – see, we, we, we still believe that, like, Miles and I have talked about it before, that at least the team itself was the best team in the country. We could have right. beaten any one of those two the teams. The way the things in committee was going Oh, yeah, it wasn't gonna, they weren't going to check. No, they, they, were, they weren't going to let us in. I mean, no. They so, weren't going to let you in. No, it was it was kind of a Rose Bowl thing, in my opinion. I mean, I would have loved to get to that <laughs> point to be the national – again, the national championship game. But I honestly – don't think that it w- they would have let us in. They probably wouldn't have. 
they probably wouldn't have let you in. We always just say like we were talented enough. Like that whole team that you guys had was just loaded top to bottom. Like they was just so stacked with talent. But we get there. First half's going good. Um, I believe you guys were up 17. Uh, it was like 24-7 yeah. at the half. And uh, it could have been more. It was a little conservative play calling at the end of the first half, uh, in my opinion, uh, especially with Kellen Moore under center. I thought that, you know, we had about a minute left with like 60 yards to go. I thought we could have probably put some more points on the board. But anyways, that's that's not the point. Get down <laughs> to the end of the game. Um, somehow uh, that – that crowd of Nevada, I hate them so much. From a fan's perspective, I've, ever, I've done a podcast on this. I literally hate Nevada fans more than any other <laughs> fan base in the entire country, and I just I despise every one of them. So their fans are getting behind it. They make a miraculous comeback somehow with some bullcrap calls and all sorts of stuff that's going their way. This momentum shifted, and it was just like you could mm-hmm. feel it in the air. It was a weird feeling. It was. It was a disgusting feeling. And cold it was so cold. I actually got sick that night because not only were my nerves shot from being in the game, but I was so cold that I literally had to sit in the t- – I was shaking. I got, like, like the flu sick. So come down. Um, obviously, Kaepernick comes down, throws another pass out to this. It's like a five-yard and out on Brandon Thompson, who for some reason couldn't press up on coverage. Anyways, so they come down, tie the game, and Moore makes a miraculous pass to Titus Young. Like somehow gets the ball out to Titus Young on this – bomb yeah to get us into field goal range somehow they caught it so we 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 were getting ready um from that time though you knew you're coming out to kick a field goal it's tie game mm-hmm. can potentially win the game what's going on because now they have to review the damn play darn play pardon my language guys <laughs> so they have to review that yeah for 50 minutes it seems yeah it, i felt like it took forever so i was trying to stay warm kick a few in the net just to you know keep my foot warm because I was wearing double socks. I was layering up down there just to you know, feel yeah. my legs. And so, yeah, I mean, if that review felt like it took forever, and I'm sure it did. It did. It did take forever. <laughs> I, it's bogus. Yeah, I, yeah I, I, I'll fight them on that one too. Um, but, yeah, I mean, nothing really – you know, I just did my normal routine, kicking in the net, kind of warm up, that kind of thing, and, you know, just – a smile on my face, just kind of what I did four years or three years before yeah. that against Nevada when we had him at home. Uh, just like I love being in the spot. This is what I wanted to be in. This is why I did doing what I do and wanted to be a kicker because things are on the line. I want to be that guy. Um, so, yeah, I mean, nothing really in my head or make it or miss it, that kind of stuff. Like um, just go out and do my job and went out there and, you know, everything, snap hold, kick felt really good um maybe peak just a tiny bit just to kind of you know see it go through yeah um i thought it went through uh pro- everyone else probably does except for nevada um it did go through just so everybody knows that <laughs> field goal it went through the upright it, you know i felt it did just you know where i was at i mean i don't know it nowadays i'm sure they can I don't even know if they review that kind of stuff anymore, but if they do that, I mean, I'm sure. But, I mean, the goalposts weren't the right size when yep. they were told at the beginning of the year to do that too. And, I mean, not to blame any of that stuff. I mean, I could have just put it right down the middle and end a story and we're somewhere warm uh, <laughs> playing. You know, that just wasn't the case. And uh, I kind of was shocked for a little bit. I mean, I, we talked a little bit. I was like, kind of they all reacted that it missed and I know half of our team reacted that it went in and I was just kind of waiting because I didn't see them do any sort of you know signal make or miss and no and none of our guys on the line were actually cheering or right. anything and but you know I, the guys behind us I mean nice I, I know they were um and then I was just like oh crap like it didn't go like they didn't count that and so, I mean, that made me mad because the competitor in me came came out and I was, you know, PO'd at myself. And, yeah. Um, had a co- couple choice words. That ended totally up, fine. Totally but, understand. You know, I mean, I probably could have covered my mouth <laughs> and it wasn't all over ESPN or anything like that. <laughs> ESPN didn't have to show it that many times. Um, but, yeah, I mean, then it just, I mean, I just felt the worst i let everything down i mean you just kind of sink down and you know trying to get back into the okay well we're in overtime we get we at least get that and 
you know, trying to get in that mindset, but everything just happened so fast by the, that kick into the next one. And, um, I was still just so angry. So then I overcompensated trying to just crush the heck out of the thing, just to kick it freaking out of the stadium. And, you know, I pulled that. I mean, it was another chip shot that I've made a hundred times in my life. And, um, yeah. So that sucked. Yeah. It's, it, that's, <laughs> that's a brutal, it was the worst feeling, oh, man. From a fan's perspective, we always talk about this. Like, from if, if not just your your experience, but like from a fan's perspective, we can sit here and talk all day long. Like, oh, are you kidding me? It just ruined my life. Like I've said, I was like, dude, that was the worst loss in Boy State history. I didn't never say Kyle ruined my life. I'm just saying it was the worst loss in Boy State history. Um, I always said that like, I ended up marrying my ex-wife after that. So it was like my life went to a downward spiral. <laughs> I just joke around about it, but like we don't ever get to hear from the player's perspective. So when you're talking like that, it's like. I actually like feel sick, like as if I'm like I'm trying to put myself in your shoes, and I'm like, what a terrible like way to be. But then, no one made it easier. Like the fans didn't make it easier for you. Um, it, it, I mean, I'm sure you had a support system, right? But then you're getting death threats, right? Like, didn't there there, there was so much crazy crap that happened afterwards rather than just moving forward? Yeah, I mean, it was. I mean, coming from this small town in Meridian, I mean, I was like, God, is this actually really happening? Like. I didn't think it was going to be, you know, a life or death type of thing. And, um, I mean, I mean, not to say that I don't take football serious or my job serious about what I was doing. And, you know, it wasn't like I went out there and intentionally missed on purpose. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, you know, <laughs> like I felt the worst, like I was probably, everyone else could say that, Oh, that was worst day. I felt sick. Like, Come on, I was that was me. Yeah, for <laughs> I, sure. I, I, everybody, I mean, millions of people watching. I felt all that on my shoulders. My teammates, I mean, letting my teammates down. I mean, that was one of the worst feelings. Is you know, that one kick ruined so much for what everyone else you know put into all season long. And you know, you don't want to think like that. It is a team sport, and it's you know the team. You know, we as a team lost that game in that second half. Um, I just didn't help the cause because I didn't do my job. No one did their job that second half, really. Um, so, yeah, I mean, but my position is magnified because I'm only out there yeah. three times a game, really. And so, yeah, that's that was the hardest thing is, like, going back to, like, look them in the eye and, you know, just see their reaction because of what we've worked so hard to do all season long for the last four years that we were all together is, you know, that one thing just, you know, put us and put us in Vegas that year. And yeah, I mean, Vegas was a good bowl game, but I mean, it wasn't where we wanted to be at the end of the year. And yeah, so that was a hard time with, and then with the death getting home and, you know, at that time, the Facebook was a whole, you know, big old thing. It, kind of that social media era kind of was picking up at that time. Yeah. And so, I mean, I hadn't heard anything else of anyone else going through something like that, that I did. I mean, people get stuff sent to their house, but not blasted all over social media where the whole world can see. And I mean, I've talked about it before I've I had over 800 new friend requests. I had 800 plus new emails in my direct messages into my Facebook thing. And I mean, yeah, I mean, I read a few of them and then I was just like, okay, I'm just, I'm just, I'm turning this whole thing off. So I shut my whole thing down. I mean, and it wasn't all a whole lot of death. It wasn't the whole death threats thing. Every single one of those emails. I mean, I would probably say 75 to 80% of them were a lot of good, inspiring ones. I mean, and people, you know, encouraging. And so, yeah, the rest of it, that was all just people either felt like they needed to give their two cents yeah. and, which, you know, they have every right to do, but I think at a certain point it's, it kind of puts us in a position of where we're in today's world. Yeah. Of, this is where we're at. We are so rude to people that, you know, everyone's always fighting everybody. Yeah, and, everyone's and so, got something so, to say. So something like that, I mean, it, I mean, I get it. People are passionate. I understand I'm passionate too, and I, and I totally understand it. Um, I just don't think I could just, tell someone to go you know off themselves yeah you know i've got a little bit more respect for a human than that and i mean and some of these things were coming from like 14 year old kids and oh geez it, it was it was it was crazy and but i mean like i said there were so many other people that wrote i mean i had people from actually nevada there was an elementary school like they wrote the kids 
they wrote um, notes saying, you know, hey, you know, keep your head up, all that kind of stuff. And I mean, it was awesome. I, I got a freaking like one of those white U.S. postal mail boxes they bring in. To, I got like two fulls of those <laughs> of all the letters. And I mean, I still have them all. And um, but yeah, I, I mean, everyone, the receptionist had to go through and basically cipher out all the bad ones she's like there yeah. it was crazy i felt bad for her because she probably had to read some of these so i don't even know what those ones said but i mean there was a lot of good ones that i mean she and she, that was awesome one instance i don't know maybe you've heard it where that guy called up my mom's house to, yeah about the he bet like he a bet like quarter a, million or two hundred fifty thousand or something yeah i was yeah. just talking about that the other day I yeah that. and so and yeah and then the story why my mom actually didn't get all those phone calls was brian my little brother actually unplugged the phone so my mom could watch the game while she was in the kitchen making, you know, everything for making food for everyone who came over to watch the house. So he put a TV in the dining room where she could see it on that table. And so he unplugged the phone for it and he forgot to plug it back in after the game oh, when he okay. was breaking because the TV is still plugged in. And so the other Bratzman family in this town got everything sent to them (laughs) so i feel really bad for them and you know it sucks for them but you know so yeah that kind of thing and but yeah those are crazy stories and finally i mean months after all that hoopla happened i and i sat down with some of my friends and you know we just we had a glass of wine and we did some poetry reading (laughs) (laughs) and then it got to the point where one of them was like Jesus, just like Jesus, dude. <laughs> and I was like, well, "Shall we stop?" And he's like, "Yeah, this is getting too ridiculous." So, <laughs> yeah, so I ended up just deleting that whole Facebook page, and yeah, that was kind of the dude. grunt of it. And then, I mean, to make everything worse, I mean, you got to go into senior day that following week. Yeah, against Utah State. Yeah, and I'm sure like everybody. I remember you actually ended up doing an interview with somebody it was ESPN or somebody yeah, it was a bigger it was with Tom Rinaldi with yeah. ESPN and then he was in town to do kind of Kellen's Heisman thing um and looking back on that now I probably would have just not done it um because one I looked dumb in the interview uh <laughs> <laughs> and it, I mean it was just I don't think it should have got all that type of attention. And I kind of brought that a little bit on myself. I mean, looking back now that I'm older now, I see, I'm like, I probably shouldn't have done that. Um, but I did. And, um, you know, I mean, as an experience, it's a learning curve. I mean, he asked me crazy tough questions. I mean, for being a week after or less than it was like, Shoot, I think it was either a Monday or Tuesday that like I ended three up. Three days away, yeah. three days out. Or it was like a day or so afterwards, too, that he was in town for it. So, I mean, that was, you know, and then I guess other outlets wanted to talk, but then they all told him no. And then so I wasn't trying to big time any of the local guys here or anything like that. But he was just like, let's move on. And, yeah. And, and you know, that's kind of why I wanted, I should have just not done the ESPN yeah. thing was just to move on. I mean, I wasn't trying to big time anybody. I was like, sure, I'll do it. I mean, our communications guy says, let's, you know, you yeah. want, let's do it. And, but so that's and that story with that one. And it's a brutal story from the, the beginning to the end of that specific situation, but you didn't, it didn't like bring you down completely though. No. That's, that's one of the things that it's, it's really cool to see from someone that I know personally that went through something like that. Um, and how sports actually help you get through stuff like it's it's like it teaches you things in life because you're gonna hit an all time low right there because at that point it's probably one of the hardest things you'd probably got one of the hardest things right. I'm not gonna say it was the hardest I don't know your life specifically like that but right sometimes we go through tough things and you have to you have to keep moving forward the world doesn't stop so like you had more games to play and then you continued on afterwards yeah so we're done with we're done with college and you got to you're gonna continue on playing football. What's the experience like now? What what was it, what did you decide to do after college? Um, well, one note I'll put back there. I mean, to get through all that, I mean, I the the fan base, the coaching staff, the teammates, and my family and everyone yeah. who was in my life at that time helped me get yeah. through. I mean, I end up meeting Jared Speedy, Speedy Peterson. Yeah, you know, and going through that route. I mean, he, you know, up and down in his life too. And so, I mean, that was cool. I mean, I wouldn't trade that experience for anything. 
I wouldn't do it over again. You know, if I did, I would do the same thing. I mean, it, people probably don't want to hear that, but I mean, I grew as a person. I came back down from being on cloud nine of thinking I was, you know, amazing and all that stuff. And, you know, it just humbled me a lot more than, you know, I let the, I let something get the best of me. And so it was a, it was a learning curve is a humbling experience, but the people around me, uh, you know, my teammates, I mean, they helped out. I mean, it was crazy to see like some of my thought, some of them probably didn't even know I was even around, you know, and, yeah. like, and, but they were all surround me, you know, that was cool. Um, but yeah, after college I went to, uh, you know, I didn't get any pro workouts, no pro workouts. Nope. No pro workouts. So what do you go like? So, you know, you you knew kicking. So you had a decision to make, like you can try to keep kicking or you can try to go work, but you still wanted to follow your dream of, you know, playing football a little bit more. Um, But yeah. So, I mean, I thought I was at least going to get callbacks with stuff like that because my pro day was, I have never kicked that great in my life. And I, I balled out in pro day after waiting hours and hours after everyone ran their 40s and that stuff i'm not really bitter about it (laughs) sarcasm (laughs) um but yeah i mean so that sucked and i you know and i was working with billy cundiff at the time and um he told me give it five years if you want to i mean if this is something you want to do try it for five years and if not then get out and so after graduating didn't have a job or anything. So I got to find a job while still trying to train, make money just to survive, to go do things. Um, and I got a call from Utah blaze. It's a arena football league. Um, at that point, at that time they were the top, they were the only arena team. I mean, going back from the days that they were on NBC and all that stuff. So, I mean, like yeah that's cool you know why not I can continue to still play I get a little bit of pay for it you know not much um but you know I still get to do what I love and yeah so I went down there I did a workout they had another guy in there they were gonna offer it to me but I was kicking so well this is probably one of the mistakes I made but I was kicking so well at that time I told my agent he was talking to a few CFL teams they said get me in for a workout with these guys with the CFL teams like get me a contract, get me, f- figure something out. Well, he really didn't do a whole lot in five years. Um, <laughs> not bitter at all either. Um, but so I went down there and I said, I went, I said, Hey, look, my agents kind of, he's been talking to some CFL guys. They want to bring me in. So I'm, I'm going to head back home. And they were like, Oh, okay. And so, Two weeks later, I get a call from them like, hey, what the heck are you doing? Are you still around? We want you. We need you. This is Utah calling me. The guy we had isn't working out. I was like, yeah, I'm just hanging out at home. (laughs) I'm not doing anything. I don't have to do anything. I've got no ties here anymore right now. Like, I can go. And so packed up my little less 10, and I headed out. And, you know, I loved it. It was I regret making the decision the first time of walking away because I mean, I could have still played and still done, you know, CFL stuff. And I mean, I didn't know the whole ins and out of that kind of business at that time. And, you know, I learned a lot of things in the AFL, making sure you take care of yourself, not just on the field, but off it with, you know, with dealing with your contract and dealing with management and all that stuff. And I mean, that league, it's, you say what you want and if they don't want to give it to you, someone else will. I mean, and it's, and you know, I've, I went through that. I mean, if you, if you just get roll over, they'll continue to do it. And so I am, but I love playing that league. I mean, the goalposts are a lot smaller. And I mean, I had, I didn't kick as many field goals cause our offense was so high powered in that league that I mean, we had the offensive MVP as our quarterback at that time. And I mean, our receiver, it, just a freak team it was awesome to be a part of and i mean i've been lucky to be on teams like that and but yeah i mean i'd kick some you know kick some pats i would win the game or you know like that kind of stuff so that kind of started boosting my confidence a little bit more of you know putting nevada behind me yeah and all that um so then that was fun and be a part of uh, coaching staff that wanted me to around and and fans i mean those salt lake fans were awesome i mean they just welcomed me in and um 
but yeah, so I did that for, you know, I was there for two years. I ended up then, then I tore my shoulder again. And I was just like, you know what? I'm done. I, this is I, getting hurt too, too many times. Yeah. Um, so I was just working and I mean, nothing really coming up, trying to, trying to find a job. I mean, don't have a whole lot of experience, you know, just, yeah. you know, playing sports and not going to be able to do that kind of stuff where I'm trying to find experience to get into more things and for more money. And they had a guy that got hurt and then they end up having one of their DBs, a good buddy of mine, he'd end up trying to kick for them. And they're just like, I, and I just, and I, you know, I was talking to friends. I said, because I saw that he got injured. I said, I guarantee I'll get a phone call tomorrow. Sure enough, I got a phone call and they're like, when can you come down? I said, look, I told you, I, like, I can't, I can't live down there. I've got a job here, a full-time job now that, you know, it's, I mean, it's not great, but, you know, and I've got things going on at that time in my life and can't really just up and leave. And, yeah. um, I was like, well, you guys fly me in and they're all, let me get you, but let me get back to you on that. And I'm like, okay, fine. And. I get a call five minutes later. Yeah, we'll fly you in. I said, but I'm not staying there. We'll we'll figure this one game out, and then we'll go from there. And they're like, okay, we get there. I get there that day, and I think I, I mean, the game was. I mean, they, they flew me in a day before. I hadn't kicked in a little while because I was still yeah. doing my shoulder and I was coaching at Rocky and all that stuff. And then they were, they're like, I get there in the locker room. Like, we'll fly you in every game if you just say yes. And I said, okay, fine. And so that kind of goes back to, you know, not being ran over by and being taken for granted from all these other things and trying to, you know, if you want it, ask for it. What's the worst they're going to say? No. Well, then they, they don't get you. And that, I mean, so, and they wanted me and they'll, that's what they wanted to do. And so, yeah, that was fun. I mean, that's so rad. It was cool. I mean, I just, I mean, and, and what, I could see it one thing not working out if, I mean, I just went there and just crapped my leg down and didn't do anything and just, you know, but I had a good, I got, had a good year that year. And, um, you know, so it made, you know, no hostility between all the players and that stuff. Plus they understood like, you don't need a beer. Our practices were an hour long <laughs> and I seriously kicked for maybe five minutes. I mean, I, like during the whole practice, I mean, we do their special team stuff, but it would really be no kicking. I mean, I kicked at the beginning or after. So they're like, you really don't need to be here anyway. So that's cool. They understood that. But as long as I produced on the field, they were fine with it. And so, yeah, that was a fun season. That's to so do. rad. Yeah. And I got to collect all my money. I didn't have to use it for housing <laughs> and to stay down there. They made us too. But yeah, so that was my good experience with Utah until they folded and <laughs> – left me with some medical bills because my back went out on me in the game and so I still deal with that would deal with that but you know it is what it is I wouldn't trade it again I mean you make new friends and connections yeah. and it's, it's worth it and and you get to play at the professional level it's not necessarily the top tier but it's still exactly. it's at the next level of football so it's still it's doing what you want to do and then just real quick, uh, before we wrap up, I want to talk about very briefly about this Spokane team. Like randomly, uh, I see like on social media one day <laughs> that you're going to Spokane. I didn't know what was going on. I just kind of like tried to keep tabs on you a little bit. So I just heard the Spokane. You were playing for Spokane, but I didn't know how it worked. I was like, oh, is he gonna play the whole year? But it ended up only being like a game or something. Yeah, or it was only one game, and um, so and I had just got back from Jacksonville from that whole ordeal, um, and. So they were calling me up to, hey, what are you doing? I was like, I'm about to start my new job, which is a big boy job uh, mm -hmm. that I got that, I mean, that I still have now. And so I said, well, I can only do one game because I'm just about to start this new job. And they're like, okay, well, we can do that. I said, well, I just got done driving across country. Will you fly me up? And they're like, yeah, we'll fly you. I'm like, okay, cool. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, perfect. Um, and, yeah, shoot, I had – I, and I honestly hadn't kicked in a f how the month, a couple months after I got back from Jacksonville. I mean, it was maybe a month and a half, two months by the time I ended up going. And, yeah, I had only kicked a couple times, went up there, and Frick had, I think I was like 13 of 13 or 13 of 14, something like that for PATs, and was like 
second most consecutive PATs or something in the league at the <laughs> Yeah, like you broke a record or yeah, right up was, there. I remember seeing it posted. It was I'm like, like what? <laughs> yeah, it was something crazy like that and I was like, Oh, cool. Well that was exciting for not, you know, trying to get into it. I mean, I did it for fun because I mean I knew the pay for the IFL isn't the greatest, but so yeah, so Spokane used to be up in the AFL and then everyone started leaving the AFL and so they end up going so how do you switch names because they didn't own the right to the shock that name so then they had to rebrand um so they went with the empire um one game i was one and done and i started my job and then a year later they called me back up and like hey our guy has got to go do something blah blah, blah. and i was like where do i need to go and they're like well we're gonna be in salt lake because salt lake had just started a new ifl team right and I was like, sure, why not? I'll go play. Like, <laughs> you guys pay my gas? They're like, yeah, we'll pay your gas. So we drove down there, and, I mean, Brian was down there at that time. Oh, so yeah, we your, your brother was him. working there Yeah, so the Yeah, so uh, me and the girlfriend hopped in the car. We went down there, um, and, again, I had another successful game, and so I think I'm like 19 of 20 in my, AF, uh, my IFL career now, so it's just cool. Dude, you're, <laughs> that's actually pretty sick. Now, did, but just real quick, did you like when you played for Spokane for the two times? Um, right. Did you even get to meet any of the players? Or you just kind of show up, do your thing, go home. Um, no, I, I, I mean, you show up at the locker room and they're there and they're like, and but, I mean, the cool thing is a lot of those guys. I mean, they're all they all follow sports and so they kind of know who you are, the, okay. who you who you sign, who they sign. I mean, the, the signing report's always up of who gets in, but that name kind of pops out to them and they and they hear Boise State. Yeah. And so they know, like, oh, you came from Boise State. I'm like, yeah. And then you get to talk. So, I mean, there's a lot of cool guys on that team too. I mean, I somehow gravitate towards, like, the big old D-line, O-line <laughs> guys, like, want to hang out with me. And so, yeah, my first time up in Spokane, we, I mean, we went out and after the little fan fest that they put on for the teams, I mean, we went and hung out there and had a good time. But then I was on the plane the next night, the next morning, and – back home doing stuff and but yeah that was i mean get to know those guys are cool that's that's pretty rad man uh just the experiences you got to have and w what's next for kyle brotsman uh i don't know um i'm just working i know there's the new indoor team that's trying to come around um but i i, I mean i know dan goodell had a really good tryout for them uh and so, I mean, if they go with him, they're not missing much at all to, I mean, they're not going to, it's a good pick if they want to do that. I mean, I don't know if my body's going to allow me to play a full season. I mean, I wake up every day feeling like I broke my back, honestly, and it's, and it, it sucks. So I think sports might be done for me. If they ever call and needed a one game thing, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll be I'll, I'll lace my boots up again and go do it. But, <laughs> you know, I think Dan will be a good guy if, if they do end up going with him. Uh, they should. Um, I think they'll they'll enjoy that around uh, him, and he's younger and it's not injured. So but Dan's a good dude. Uh, he's, like I said, I think he'll be awesome if he – I mean, that, that kicking game in the IFL is a little easier. I mean, you're not doing full kickoffs. I mean, he can honestly take three steps and – there's no back netting, right? I, I mean, I honestly hope they do the IFL route. I think if they need to, if they want to, the IFL would be the good, good spot yeah, to, to go, go to. Yeah, I mean, they got more teams around this way, and that they can get to. And yeah, it sucks that Spok or that yeah, Spokane's not a team anymore because they were good. It's yeah. just trying to fund that is. That's a whole different story. Yeah, it's a monster in itself. <laughs> yeah, we won't have to get into that today because I can go on and on about that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I appreciate you joining me for the discussion, man. No, man, Dude. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, for sure. And for everybody listening out there, I hope you enjoyed the, the interview. And uh, you know it. We'll talk to you next week. Guys, thanks so much for listening to another episode of my show. Now, if you could go and do me a favor, head over to iTunes, give me five stars, and leave me a review, it would be greatly appreciated. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your support.